We've quickly covered two affirmative defenses, duress and necessity. Necessity is sometimes called choice of evils. It can be instructive and fun to compare the model penal code formulations of the two. Suppose uh, driver X could safely stop, but driver X drives over two hikers on carjacker Y's do it or else threat of death. Does driver X have a model penal code necessity defense? Well, the answer has to be no, because he hasn't affected a net saving of lives. Does the uh, driver X have a model penal code duress defense? And the answer is yes. Uh, doesn't matter that he failed to avoid the greater evil. If a reasonable person, or I should say a person of reasonable firmness in his situation could not resist uh, the pressure. What about uh, this one? Driver X, now he's all alone, but he notices his brakes are failing. Driver X fatally strikes two hikers rather than plunge into a remote gorge. Does uh, Driver X have a model penal code necessity defense? Uh, the answer is no. He has not affected a net savings of lives. What about if there's only one hiker? Again, there's no net savings of lives. Does he have a duress defense? No, no, he's not facing any unlawful force. Isn't this fun? Let's try another. You are immobilized in a wheat field. You stepped into a prairie dog hole and are stuck. The combine operator will not see you in time to stop. Do you have an affirmative defense if you use your bazooka to save your life? The answer is yes, you may use deadly force in self-defense. You might balk at this. The farmer is not attacking you and is innocent. But I remind you, under the model penal code, he counts as using unlawful force. Unlawful force means force, the employment of which constitutes an offense or actionable tort. But in our hypo, the combine operator is innocent of fault. Are we faced with a choice between committing a criminal homicide or being sliced into little pieces? Wait, the model penal code is not finished. Defining unlawful force, it continues, or would constitute such offense or tort, except for a defense such as absence of negligence, not amounting to a privilege to use the force. So the fact that the operator is not negligent does not mean that the threat you face is not one of unlawful force. That is because he is using force and that use would be unlawful were it negligent. We could call the combine operator an innocent aggressor against whom we are privileged to use force and even deadly force. Compare the following case. Through no fault of his own, this man is falling through space. He will fall on you unless you vaporize him first with your ray gun. May you? Or is that criminal homicide? Seems like the combine hypothetical. In that case, you had a defense of self-defense if you used your bazooka to save yourself. Same here? I think there's a difference. The falling man is not using force. He's not merely innocent. He's not an aggressor of any kind. Gravity is a force, but he isn't using it. Therefore, he is not using unlawful force. So it's prison 
or death. Luckily, the model penal code necessity defense would be available if we believe we can affect a net savings of lives. Better that he die than you both do. I hope these fanciful examples are not testing your patience. Let's finish up with one that's more down to earth. A solo pilot saves herself but kills a motorist. Any affirmative defense? The pilot makes an emergency landing on a busy freeway. She saves herself, but a motorist is killed. She is charged with involuntary manslaughter. She has no defense of self-defense. She was not protecting herself against the use of unlawful force by such other person. Model Penal Code choice of evils? No again. She was reckless in her belief if she believed she would affect a net savings of lives. And she didn't. She saved herself at the expense of the motorist's life. That's all we have time for today. Shelter in place and stay safe. That means no unnecessary trips.